So you lot seemed to really like it last year when I listed all of my favourite books that I'd read in 2015. So if it isn't broken, mm, do it again. I've got it down to 10. I'm going to try and be brief. I agonised over what titles to pick, um, but in the end I've gone for a mixture of poetry, non-fiction, fiction, something for everybody. First up is one I've talked about before. It is Lara Williams Treats. This is a collection of sweeping short stories um, about sex and work and being a millennial but also just being yourself and I thought it was of huge literary merit. It's published by a small publisher um, based in Glasgow called Freight Books. Um, they're amazing, they do great books, look them up. I have already reviewed this so I'll link that below. Eat Sweat Play, again, I didn't review this but I made a whole video on how it had affected me so I'll leave a link to that. This for me was the antidote to a lot of issues around body dysmorphia, a lot of fear of sport, a, a lot of fatigue um, at that kind of Fitzpiration style um, coverage of women's um, movement in the world and how women deserve to be able to use their bodies. Before this book, I believed that sport wasn't for me. After this book, I realised that it wasn't something from inside me, it was something I had absorbed. <laughs> the life-changing magic of not giving a fuck is Sarah Knight's answer to The Magic Art of Tidying, which is a great book, but if that book annoyed you, oh, this is, this, you'll love this, you're gonna, you're gonna. <laughs> You will learn things like having personal policies, um, things like the not sorry method, how to say no to things without offending people, how to really prioritise and clean your mind of the things that you don't really need to be doing. And I also made a video about this, so I'll link that below. We're cleaning the joint here, we're cleaning the joint. Next one. The next one is Magic Lessons by Elizabeth Gilbert. Now you might know her because she wrote a book called Eat, Pray, Love. However, if you didn't like Eat, Pray, Love, this book is still for you. I listened to this in audiobook and Liz has one of the warmest, richest, most amazing voices ever. She also has a podcast, so if you want to sample what the book is about, I will link that below. This is based on a TED talk she gave um, about this idea of what magic is and what creativity is and why um, this idea of the tortured artist, of somebody who needs to be sad to create is literally destroying us. The psychology behind being nervous to make things. I've listened to this audiobook two and a half times, I think, just in 2016. And even if you don't really, like, she uses a lot of symbolism and, I, and a lot of it is quite tongue in cheek, I think. And, but even if the spirituality side of it bores you, the ideas behind what she's talking about still ring true. It talks about that idea when you know when you've like, you think you were gonna do something or you had this idea and then you just realise that somebody just did it. You're like, what, how does that happen? She has this thing where she believes that ideas will visit people and they'll, they'll, they kind of have their own motives and they know they need to exist. So if you are visited by an idea and you feel like you need to create it and, and you don't, that idea will move on and it will find somebody else. And that's why like different parts of the world have similar ideas at similar moments because these ideas just need to happen. Um, I've never read a book that has motivated me more to not only create but help other people create and make them feel valid. So if you want to make things in 2017 and you're struggling with that, this, this, this. Oh, this is Kate Tempest, I fucking love you. This is um, Let Them Eat Chaos. It's a long form poem um, that will probably take you about half an hour to read. Um, it's also an album that she's made. It follows lots of different um, diverse kind of characters all over London as a storm breaks out and it gets inside all of their minds. It's simple, it's political, it's kind of like a rallying cry to change things, um, but it, it's all, I cried quite a lot, quite a lot, it was quite an assault, it was quite a half hour, I'll tell you that. But if you need courage um, in 2017 or all of the world's problems feel a little bit too complicated for you, um, this is a way to get the spirit back into you and to kind of like more deeply understand where other people are coming from. Um, I just th thought it was... Hold Your Own was great, but this is... You've been publicly shamed. John Ronson is an amazing journalist and writer and he follows lots of different people around as they deal with the aftermath of being publicly shamed on the internet. Whether that's Justine Sacco who tweeted a kind of in bad taste racist joke, turned her phone off, got on a plane. While she was on the plane, hashtag has Justine landed yet, trended worldwide on Twitter. Um, everybody circulated the tweet. When she got off the plane, she found out that she'd lost her job and that hundreds of thousands of people wanted to kill her. It talks about the aftermath of shame, the idea of 
mob morality and group judgment and the function a few people in our society who have been labelled as bad has for the rest of us. How we want to distance ourselves from bad decisions rather than identify with them. It goes to some pretty dark places, but he manages to keep it lighthearted. And what I really like about John Ronson is that he is so kind. He is one of the most intelligent, sharp, open-minded, um, like really fair, really like asks the most awkward questions um, in the most awkward ways. But he he manages to maintain this um, sense of calm throughout it and this this sense of like empathy, which is like I don't I don't know how he, I don't know how he, I don't know how he does it. Um, again, I listened to this in audio book and I recommend it because John Ronson has like a really unique voice that's. Oh, like it really helps you get the tone with which he is judging people. It's just, it's just, uh, it can't, I just, uh, uh, uh. I might make another video on it because I probably will listen to it again. I have this bad um, habit of thinking that I am enlightened. Uh, and every now and then, I mean, as every now and then, every time I pick up a book about race, I'm proved wrong. And this is the book that not only did that for me this time, but also stands alone as an incredibly engaging and well thought out and well executed collection of poetry. This is Vivek Shreya's collection of poetry called Even This Page Is White. It is, it shook, it shook, it shook me. It shook me in a way that I was embarrassed to be even shook. I first saw this on my friend Jason's channel and when I saw his brilliant video on it um, and I was sounding off about it in the comments being like, this sounds absolutely incredible. Uh, it's not available in the UK at the moment, ah. Um, he was like kind enough and believed in this book enough to get a copy to me out of his own pocket from Canada here. Um, and I've read it several times since and have been trying to find the best way to talk about it on this channel because um, part of the point of the book is that it's kind of talks about how in 2016 it's not enough to not be racist. It is absolutely vital um, that we give what we have too much of which is limelight, platform, resources. Here's a poem called Not All White People. I don't know your story, that is true, you are a good person, sterling intentions, good heart, extra mile. Your parents laboured, you grew up poor, picked on and kicked out, haunted by loss. Many truths can be true at once, you can be all of the above and you can be racist. One of the poems is completely made up of um, quotes and words from the signed petition to ban Kanye West from playing at Panem Games closing ceremony. If you like poetry, it stands alone as delicious amazing poetry. But if you're also interested in finding out whether you are a little bit racist, this. I will definitely be checking out more of her work because it is absolutely astonishing. Um, and I suggest you do too. Jen pointed me towards this book. This is Why God is a Woman by Nin Andrews. Um, again, it's a short, accessible um, poetry collection. For those of you who don't like poetry, it's kind of poetry, but it's kind of just storytelling. This is a book this is a short uh, experiment in imagination and what it would be like on an island where it was Adam who bit the apple. It was women who were the sacred body from which men grew. Where vagina envy is a common psychological disorder. I can't even finish that sentence without laughing. It's amazing. The men grow wings and the bigger your wingspan, the more desirable a man you are. I had, I had to conclude a rom-com in here because I am a huge rom-com. I'm a huge rom-com fan. I'm only starting to say that now because like when you're studying a master's at a Russell Group University, it's not something you should say. Uh, and when you're in publishing, it feels like in a lot of places in publishing, that's not really what you should be enjoying the most. You should be, you know, reading both, but being like, well, obviously Murakami's better. Is he though? Because Mari McFarlane has done it again. Um, I've already reviewed this book, so I'll link that below, but when I'm looking at my shelves and I'm going, what was an actually great read? Like this book knows what it was trying to achieve and it does it in this clever, like tongue in cheek, amazing, sharp witted rom-com way. And the day that Mario McFarlane writes rom-com um, film scripts, the rom-com genre will be healed. Anybody who thinks that YA is a subcategory and not as good category and not as literary category as any other, book genre uh, hasn't read this book. Hasn't read this book. It's about two American boys who are struggling 
with their the duality of their heritage and their culture and their sexuality and their best friends and it is absolutely heart-wrenching and I read it in one night which I'm not usually somebody to do that I usually take like th- three months to finish a book I, I I I was just weeping by the end of it it's got race issues LGBT issues it's got feelings it's got so many feet and crisis of masculinity that's also a huge part of it is this idea of um what they think it means to be a man and um it it's so subtle it's so it's so unpatronizing and it's so um it has like it doesn't just show characters who are happy or sad or upset or angry it it all the characters are displaying at least two emotions at once each scene hits these emotions that sit between all of those points like it's just how how did you, how did you, how did you how does how does this book even exist those were my personal top favorite books that i read in 2016 links to videos about all of the other books will be below and let me know below the best book that you read in 2016 so maybe i can read it in 2017 and we could all make 2017 the best year ever Okay, Frog Snug out.